Muy buenos días. Eh, Good morning. I am Mauricio Massa, and I'm the uh, regional advisor on the cancer control and prevention at the Pan American Health Organization, and it's a pleasure and an honor to serve as your moderator this morning. Before we uh, begin with this uh, global launch, I just wanted to mention that the webinar is in three languages. We have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, and Portuguese. So all you need to do is go down to the uh, lower right-hand corner of your Zoom screen, to the globe icon, and select the language of your choice. You are more than welcome to also post your comments on the chat box. That way we can engage directly with uh, all of our attendees. We're very excited about today's activity. And uh, to begin with the uh, global launch, we have a few uh, words of introduction by Silvana Luciani, Director of the Non-Communicable Diseases uh, Unit here at the Pan American Health Organization. She's been working on this for several years, and we'd like to just offer the floor so that she can give a few opening remarks. Thank you, Mauricio, and good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be able to uh, welcome you to this webinar. The webinar is co-hosted by the Pan American Health Organization as well as the uh, International Cancer Research Organization. We're going to begin today with the uh, Latin American Code again, uh, to combat cancer as we um, discuss uh, measures that can be taken to help prevent cancer in yourself and your family. So as Mauricio mentioned, we are very excited to have so many participants from institutions, organizations throughout the region, representing many governments and um, cancer associations. And we're also very happy to have all of our main uh, partners that includes uh, Healthy Caribbean Coalition, um, Amigo H, and many other of our partners working in this. We know that cancer is a major public health challenge in Latin America and the Caribbean. We know that uh, 1.4 million people are diagnosed with cancer every year, and it is the second leading cause of death in Latin American and Caribbean countries. But for most of the most uh, common cancers, such as lung cancer, uterine cancer, colorectal cancer, we know that there are key causes of these cancers, and there are effective measures to help prevent the onset of this and although we have been uh, promoting and advertising the information for many years, especially during Cancer Awareness Day in February, and also in October, the um, Breast Cancer Awareness Day, this is the first time that PAHO has brought together efforts with um, the community, medical community, as well as the community at large, having this very comprehensive and multidisciplinary webinar so that we can address all of the scientific, most recent scientific evidence, as well as recommendations for primary and secondary cancer prevention with me messages that have been uh, tailored to the current realities of countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. And that is why we're so excited to have you here as we introduce the code against cancer, as well as the, uh, the 17 recommendations and how we implement them. Some of the recommendations are aimed at the public for uh, to change their lifestyles, but we also know that it is important to have the right environment that helps to nurture and support changes in lifestyles and have the necessary public policies focused on cancer prevention. So the reports that we're going to be presenting represent the knowledge as well as the commitments of more than 60 cancer experts from throughout the region in Latin America and the Caribbean working together for more than two years in order to bring together all of the evidence and achieve a consensus regarding the key messages that we hope to convey to the public, their families, governments, in order to promote cancer prevention and awareness. So we hope that in this launch, we will be able to rely on each one of you as we implement changes in knowledge, as well as lifestyles and behavioral patterns in order to encourage cancer prevention and awareness. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Silvana, for those words of introduction. I think that really opens up the um, path in order to become uh, more familiar with uh, how the initiative was uh, developed. And now it's also a great honor to have with us Dr. Elizabeth Weatherpass, Director of our cancer research office at the world health organization it's not every day that we have the pleasure and the honor to have uh, that support uh, with our director as far as the cancer control and prevention measures so director i offer you the floor for your comments and thank you very much for joining us can everybody hear me yes we can we can do you hear me mauricio Yes, we hear you. We can hear you. I think we have a sound issue. No, we hear you. Ladies and gentlemen and participants, colleagues, friends, I am Dr. Elizabeth Weatherpass, Director of the International Cancer Research Office, IAT. And I am very pleased to be able to be with you, to join you here together with the president-elect of the UICC, Jarbas Barbosa, Barbosa, director of the PAHO organization, Istampada, director of Amigo H, Maisha Buton from the um, Caribbean Coalition for Health, Eduardo Casa, director of the uh, uh, International uh, Oncology Organization, from Latin America and the Caribbean, and uh, Ida with uh, the Ida Tom Stafford from Amigo Ache. First, let me just offer a few words about the context that led to the development of the code against cancer for Latin America and the Caribbean and the ensuing perspectives. The current situation with regards to cancer is alarming throughout this um, century cancer will become the uh, leading cause of premature death throughout the world and the major barrier to stop the um, or to uh, prevent increases in life expectancy according to studies in 2020 2.3 million new cases of cancer appeared and almost 10 million uh, deaths attributed to cancer worldwide also throughout the world it's expected that new cancer cases will increase by of a total of 30.2 million people in, by 2040. This will challenge the even the best uh, prepared healthcare systems and can have an impact on development patterns in countries throughout the world. In terms of the global mortality rates, it's expected the number of deaths attributed to cancer will increase by an estimated number of 16.4 million by 2040. And it's uh, envisioned that the greatest increases are going to be in countries that have a low human development index. So we need to take steps now in order to reduce these uh, projected increases, knowing that 40% of cancer cases could be prevented through the effective implementation of preventive intervention measures. So this effective intervention requires effective communication among the stakeholders, those responsible for public policies and the public in general regarding the key risk factor factors in cancer. Also, we need to disseminate, disseminate uh, scientific information among the stakeholders and those responsible for public policies. We, incre we already updated the um, European Commission uh, Cancer Guide that was first established at the end of the 1980s and it was published in 2014. The European Guide to Combat Cancer is a set of directives and recommendations aimed at educating and informing the public about the ways of preventing cancer. Recently, the guide was, was now tasked with developing measures and recommendations about the monitoring of future cancer codes in Europe, expanding the interventions based on uh, evidence-based measures in terms of implementation among the public, and it is directed and aimed at uh, various groups and objectives. Also, we've tasked the guide with updating the fifth edition of the European Code Against Cancer, which is currently under development in order to incorporate the most recent scientific 
advances in cancer prevention and expand the scope of the code to include policy, public policy recommendations. Among the various uh, additions, outstanding scientists and researchers provided the most up-to-date scientific research relating to cancer risk factors and interventions and preventive measures based on the current uh, cancer situation among the European communities. Given the fact that the guide has a global mandate, this experience has generated interest in developing analogous codes against cancer in other regions around the world using the same methodologies. So under the um, umbrella of a global framework of uh, cancer codes, the codes would focus on those regions that are sufficiently uh, varied and large in order to justify the development of codes adapted to the various uh, risk factors and differences in cancer patterns according to each region. Also, it would be uh, it would be adapted to the um, individual economic conditions. Right now, the Caribbean and Latin America has a increase uh, of cancer rates, and we've seen over 5 million new cases and 122,000 deaths in 2020. And it's envisioned that the cancer cases will increase by an order of 2.2 million new cases and 1.2 million deaths by 2040. So in this context, we urgently need to develop a code that will stimulate changes in public policies within the healthcare systems focused on cancer preventive measures with a broad impact among diverse communities and that can be implemented irrespective of the uh, current status and public health systems. So together with uh, support from PAHO and Latin American and Caribbean communities, the oncology com com community in particular, HCC and other uh, support mechanisms co-funding this project together with I'm very pleased that we are now about to conclude, we have concluded our three-year efforts with more than 70 experts throughout the region that have been involved in the development of the cancer code against cancer in Latin America and the Caribbean, working with uh, various teams coordinated by the Secretariat uh, under the guidance of PAHO. It's also important to point out that Contrary to the European code, the Latin America and the Caribbean code against cancer includes recommendations for decisions made at the healthcare system levels as well as the healthcare providers, in addition to recommendations for the local population in general. The codes, the um, Latin America and Caribbean code against cancer offers an extraordinary tool for public health aimed at improving knowledge of preventive measures based on evidence-based, identifying various cancer risk factors at the regional level and reinforcing and leading control and cancer prevention measures, providing guidelines and support to the governments in their implementation processes, improving capacity of healthcare, um, frontline healthcare professionals to strengthen primary and secondary measures in the war against cancer, providing not only a better understanding of the measure, major preventive measures against cancer for the community in, at large, and also improve the um, behavior patterns and motivate uh, participation in preventive measures. This project not only will provide a unified response to call attention to cancer preventive measures as the European code is doing in the European Union, but it also is focused on improving and will advance the project codes through specific efforts targeted toward the research of implementation and dissemination to improve the acceptance, adoption, and adherence to the recommendations by the population at large, in particular vulnerable groups, fostering the uh, knowledge transfer related to cancer prevention in the policies and the practices in primary healthcare and develop a monitoring and evaluation framework in order to measure the impacts of recommendations in the Latin American Caribbean Code Against Cancer. I take this opportunity to thank the members of the Scientific Code of Latin America and the Caribbean to the uh, advocacy group, the five groups of experts, as well as the scientific uh, secretariat at PAHO in order to make this code into a reality. Thank you very much, uh, 
and I give you back the floor, Mauricio. Thank you, Director, for those words of introduction and for sharing that global perspective, stressing that cancer is a challenge that is affecting all of us, and we need to take action to see how we can prevent and control this uh, challenge. Now, we have a message from our director, Dr. Yarbas Barbosa, who is currently in uh, Berlin at the uh, summit, health summit representing Latin America and the Caribbean. We know that the support provided by the director uh, regarding uh, measures to combat cancer through initiatives, priority initiatives that include strengthening the prevention of non-communicable diseases in the primary health care, as well as the initiative uh, to combat diseases that includes a cervical uterine cancer. So I will now offer the floor. Actually, we will show our uh, words of uh, welcome and introduction by Director Barbosa. It is a pleasure for me to be able to introduce this uh, webinar on the uh, Latin American and Caribbean Code Against Cancer. This is a major step forward in supporting our public health uh, institutions and providers in Latin America and the Caribbean. This code represents an enormous effort of cooperation between the Pan American Health Organization, the International Cancer Research Network, the providing and the Latin American Caribbean oncology community, as well as uh, the Ibero-American uh, community to combat cancer and the, uh, the uh, on, uh, Amigo H and uh, scientific uh, groups of experts from throughout the region to discuss the evidence as to how to use that evidence to better prevent cancer. So I'd like to thank all of our stakeholders and partners for their tireless efforts to achieve a consensus regarding the 17 key recommendations and to promote the code at uh, every in every network. So we hope that through the code, we'll be able to collectively introduce changes in policies as well as uh, health patterns in order to prevent cancer. We had 1.5 million new cases of cancers and uh, 700,000 deaths in Latin America and the Caribbean in 2020. This code provides a series of recommendations regarding cancer prevention and risk reduction, including uh, changes in lifestyle as well as occupational uh, and workplace changes. So the recommendations are evidence-based directed to the community in general and with uh, direct measures so that the public knows how they can reduce their cancer risks for both themselves and their families. And general recommendations also come with public health measures in order to guide governments in cancer prevention measures. Many of the recommendations reinforce the cancer prevention strategies established by HAHO for several years including uh, control on the use of tobacco, providing smoke-free environments, as well as reducing the consumption of alcoholic beverages. Some recommendations are aligned with the PAHO guidelines and initiative to try to put an end to ten, uh, more than 30 ENTs, uh, and non-communicable diseases, to provide, for example, uh, vaccines, for the, uh, and also provide um, more screening for um, urine cancer. Also provide immediate responses um, for hepatitis B, including diagnosis and treatment to all relating to hepatitis B and C. The code is particularly relevant for the primary health providers, since they are the first line of defense, the first contact point in the healthcare system. And as a result, they can provide advice, information, as well as early detection for cancer prevention. In that regard, PAHO has now disseminated a new virtual training course relating to this, uh, this code through a, through a virtual campus setting in order to share the skills needed by primary health uh, providers in uh, cancer prevention and screening. Also, PAHO is working hand in hand with governments and civil society in order to prevent cancer and ensure that the Latin American and Caribbean code against cancer will be widely disseminated. 
we need to join and we need to have you join us in this effort to disseminate this code through your respective networks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director, for your message. This call to action for those of us who are involved in this war on cancer to use this extraordinary tool that is now available for the entire region. Now we will continue, and it is a truly a pleasure to introduce Dr. Carolina Espina, who is a scientific researcher in the uh, epidemiology and uh, lifestyles and in the research uh, to combat on cancer, which is the uh, special agency, international agency on research on cancer from PAHO. She has more than 20 years of experience in cancer research. She is the uh, senior researcher in the this unit and leads the global framework on the code against cancer. So for us, it has been a major sort of support. Uh, Carolina has shown extraordinary leadership G and her whole team have taken this on through her initiative, and we thank you for all your efforts. And now I leave the floor to Dr. Carolina Espina. Thank you, Mauricio, for those words of introduction. I'm going to share some slides. So if you could please just confirm if you can see the presentation. Thank you. Yes, we can see it. Well, good morning or good afternoon to all of you. And I'd like to thank Pajo for offering me the opportunity to work closely with this project that we believe is going to be significant for the entire Latin American and Caribbean region. And we hope that uh, this will continue leading to uh, new events throughout the region. So the Latin American and Caribbean Code Against Cancer is a, uh, a tool to support governments and educate the public regarding uh, cancer prevention measures. So the code summarized, is summarized here in this slide, and I don't uh, expect you to read the whole thing. This is actually the content from a brochure that pa Pajo will have available on its website that this is also will lead you to additional information. It's a reference. So it talks about the primary and secondary um, measures for um, preventing cancer in Latin America and the Caribbean. And it's actually broken down into four key areas. These recommendations have to do with risk factors regarding lifestyles. Also, we have infections and related interventions and four recommendations regarding uh, medical interventions that include cancer screenings. And also these are supplemented by other guidelines that include measures for decision makers. So the code provides ev scientific evidence based that is up to date recommendations for the public at large and for those responsible for public policy formulation, which prioritizes the most effective and viable as well as implementable measures for cancer prevention. And it enables all actors to speak with one voice with universal and consistent messages relating to cancer preventive measures. As was already mentioned, there's a European code against cancer and again, this is not a just a rapid adaptation for Latin America and the Caribbean. This is actually a scientific effort that um, the code for Latin America and the Caribbean is a pioneer because it includes recommendations for public policy makers. Dr. Mauricio is going to explain that in more detail later on. So the key characteristic of the code is it's scientific evidence-based. We have also developed a methodology that's followed all of the guidelines that we continue to upgrade and update the content. The methodology includes a standard process that allows us to evaluate not only the regional epidemiological patterns, but also the socioeconomic as well as cultural conditions in the region. The objective of the code is to provide to people on the street the most recent uh, advances regarding 
preventive measures and interventions through direct messaging that are concise and easy to understand. The code is also a specific tool focused on cancer prevention because we know that there are many common risk factors that include that are a fact um, we know that in cancer it may vary and secondary intervention is essential the code also describes the priority actions for the region adapted in the based on the social economic and cultural factors and characteristics in the region and not all countries are going to follow the same pace in terms of their implementation this provides a roadmap for establishing intervention mid medium term and long term intervention measures also it's a multi sectorial approach that's been adopted to combat cancer since it is a very complex challenge and the secondary can uh, community or sector cannot do it alone we've also seen a again a know how by experts in the region that has been provided that includes uh, consensus based and collaborative efforts it also puts the individual at the center of the focus and working with paho it has provided primary healthcare staff with the necessary resources and skills in order to effectively help prevent and control cancer so as i've mentioned earlier the key focus is on is citizen based because the idea is to ra raise a greater awareness about existing preventive measures so that people feel empowered in addressing uh, or uh, obtaining uh, public health services it also includes um, guidelines for healthcare professionals that we will discuss in more detail later the code has 34 recommendations, but there are 17 specifically targeting the decision makers to be able to reinforce health systems. And therefore, the eight scientific articles published today in cancer epidemiology are targeting the scientific community. Now, I will describe the 17 recommendations. Dr. Massa will uh, describe other recommendations. First of all, tobacco is one of the main causes of cancer, and therefore the code should not only mention smoking tobacco, but also secondhand smoking or passive inhalation of smoke. Also, we show the main types of cancer and the different tumors that these cancers cause. Another point is overweight and obesity. This is related to the types of cancer shown on the screen. The importance of this recommendation is that we have to keep a healthy weight throughout life. Also, as you see on the right, Daily physical activity contributes to the prevention of the certain types of cancer. People who have a sedentary lifestyle could diminish the risk of cancer if they have daily physical activity. Therefore, here to the right, we show the types of cancer related to overweight. Also, diet recommendations are important. We have very practical recommendations and target specific uh, pro uh, products that should be avoided. Of course, we should emphasize the consumption of fruits and vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and then what we should eliminate. For instance, ultra processed uh, meats and other types of food, and then sausages and other types of uh, products like that. Also, many types of food are related to cancer, such as the ultra processed, industrially processed products. Regarding alcohol, the Latin American and Caribbean code recommends the avoidance of the consumption of alcohol because it's linked to seven types of cancer and also risk factors. Uh, related also to uh, 
lifestyle. Also, we emphasize the benefits for mothers and children. When mothers have overweight and they control that weight, then this has effects for the child too. And then about the environmental factors, the exposure to uh, the sun causes melanoma and other skin cancers. We also have added two new recommendations that are not contained in the European uh, code. The exposure to the indoors air and also the exposure to environmental contaminants. Atmosphere contamination, and air contamination. We see this in the most populated areas of the world, some of them in Latin America. And we cannot forget the exposure to cancer causing agents in our work. And we have not studied this in other countries, but we see high percentages of these work related exposure to substances that are uh, cancer causing. And then we have a new recommendation, the treatment of Helicobacter pylori bacterium. This causes an important uh, type of cancer of the stomach in different countries regarding viral infection, the Latin American and Caribbean code includes several preventive measures not only for the control or hepatitis B and C and D, the uh, human papilloma virus control, and also the HIV. So all of this should be framed within the recommendation to treat infections. Also, we have a recommendation of hormonal uh, replacement therapy during menopause. We know that this increases the rate of mammary, mammary cancer. And then also, if women take this treatment, they should do this under medical supervision. And then also, we have screening methods for early detection of colorectal cancer and breast cancer in the different regions of our area. Also, we have other tests such as occult blood in stools and other types of screens. And the last recommendation describes screening for HPV tests in the countries of the region. This infograph, of course, uh, the test is very, very small. You cannot read it. But here we show the importance of each one of the 17 recommendations to improve our life. And many of these recommendations can be applied starting in early age, in childhood. And then many types of uh, recommendations, such as uh, the control of air contamination, affect authorities and other institutions. But then the screening uh, of uh, tests for cancer are targeted to different institutions and populations. So how has this been possible? We have been able to conduct this work thanks to enormous generosity of so many experts, many work groups. We have experts from all the countries of the region and a lot of women, men, and countries. This has been coordinated by the IARC and PAHO. And also, I would like to underline the key contribution of RING, Healthy Caribbean Coalition, and ALIC, and all of these institutions have contributed their efforts to the dissemination of the codes in the different countries. Also, we have an important contribution from Amigo H, the Albert Einstein, Amigo H institution, and the American Cancer Society and Cochrane Ibero-America for the region. 
For more information, please visit the IARC webpage. You can access this to the QR code. You can scan this code, it's available in this webpage. Uh, we see English, Spanish, and Portuguese text, and you will find the 17 recommendations for the general public. And under each one of them, if you click on each one of them, we will have specific uh, recommendations for policies. Also in this webpage, we have many more resources, eight scientific publications that explain the scientific justification of each recommendation. And then also the different infographs that I have presented in the three languages and the names of all the participants in this project. In addition, BAHO will have a website dedicated to the code and you can download the document that I have presented. In this webpage, you will also have different modules that are targeted to specific scientific communities. We have a micro learning program, which is based on each one of the recommendations made in the module. And then the specific importance of the communication between professionals and patients. And I say micro learning because the professionals can access what I call pills of knowledge to broadcast this information to the patients and to the institutions for better clinical practice. This has been designed for all type of health personnel members, pharmacists, doctors, and other health workers. You can see some more images here. And the program can be accessed through the virtual campus in public health at PAHO. Uh, register now, inscriptions are also open now, and you can access this QR code and please register or through here or through the webpage. In conclusion, I will say that the main characteristics of the Latin American and Caribbean code against cancer are the fact that the code is based on the latest scientific evidence and it provides easy to follow messages, it establishes the priorities for Latin America and the Caribbean, and it allows that all actors to talk about cancer prevention with one voice. Also, it allows the education of the population to develop the abilities of all health workers and to work together in collaborative works, uh, networks. So with this, I conclude, and now we will join everybody for the implementation of this code so that we can reach all the countries. And for that, we hope to work with you. Thank you so much, Carolina, for your presentation, uh, for uh, all your team that has assumed the leadership for this uh, particular initiative to be able to get in contact with such a large group in the region. Thank you so much. And then now I will follow up with the component of the recommendations for the general population, and I will be talking about those recommendations addressed to decision makers. I just want to verify that you can see the screen clearly. Yes. As Carolina has said, the code has worked with different people and we want to reach different populations. Especially we want to reach the vulnerable population to make sure that we uh, convey knowledge about cancer and we have trainers at the health, at the level of the health workers. Uh, we want to improve uh, knowledge about the initiatives for cancer prevention. And now we're going to talk about 
the innovative part of this code, and that is how to reinforce health service to reinforce public policies. We have presented several recommendations, and Carolina said that we can group all of these in different lifestyles. We have at the beginning a recommendation so that avoid smoking, uh, to have uh, places uh, free of smoke, to have physical activity, healthy weight, healthy diet, to avoid alcohol consumption. <laughs> and many of these initiatives can be grouped without within a specific policies. We have fiscal policies, considering best practices, uh, trying to um, discourage the consumption of tobacco, electronic cigarettes, alcohol, and unhealthy foods and beverages. We know that there are many types of foods that require require a lot of processing, industrial processing, and that have a lot of oils, types of starch, sugars, fats. And then, of course, we also have animal uh, products. And there are many of, of these projects that are ready um, and products that are ready for consumption. And then fast food is another type of uh, food that we try to discourage. And uh, all kinds of fried foods. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we have the highest consumption of sugar drinks and then this increases the risk of different types of cancer. All ultra processed and excessively processed foods increase the risk of cancer. And for that reason, we have to implement several policies. For instance, labeling is important uh, or just the, uh, the inclusion of graphic figures in the uh, different labels just to make sure that the population understands that there are foods that are not healthy. And then at very early age, we see consumption of these foods. And this has to cover the entire lifetime of the population. So it is very important to talk about processed foods, about uh, talk about uh, tobacco, talk about all kinds of foods, and to make sure that we increase physical activities. We have to promote physical activities at any point in time when you have a minute. So we have many strategies, such as the um, International Code for the Marketing of Milk mother's milk. And this does not mean that uh, some products cannot be sold, but we have to know exactly uh, what it's in each product. And the parents should have this complete information. And they should not be subjected to marketing practices. We know that it is important to encourage breastfeeding. Mothers who breastfed their children had a risk 28% lower of having cancer. So a meta-analysis that was con recently conducted established a relation of 24% decrease in cancer for breastfeeding mothers. So when we increase breastfeeding, we see a reduction of cancer. So can you imagine what the importance of this measure is? We have to find the adequate spaces, all these spaces that we can have in our lives to be able to modify all of these cancer causing risk. We have several uh, codes and international conventions such as uh, 
tobacco framework for the control of tobacco, the international code for the marketing of mother's milk substitute and the safer technical package by WHO for the prevention and disability of death and disability because of the consumption of alcohol. So when we talk about other recommendations, we make a difference. We have the exposure to sunlight, which is directly related to skin cancer. And then, of course, we also have uh, different areas of Latin America where, for instance, in the western part of Mexico and other parts of Latin America, we see exposure, especially in the uh, Caribbean islands, we also have high exposure to uh, this radiation from solar origin. In Latin America and the Caribbean also, we have a lot of uh, agricultural practices uh, that are good for the economy of the different countries, but then we have contamination of air. And then, of course, we have to have a control of uh, sun exposure. We could have shelters, for instance, especially in construction workers that are exposed to sunshine. We should try to increase green areas with due protection against exposure to the sunlight. So this is something that we have, uh, that we can change, especially in the rural areas of our countries. Also, we know that in some of these areas, we use very harmful um, types of uh, resources that are bad for the environment. Uh, we have to actually reduce the number of people who are exposed to indoor air contamination also. And we have to protect these populations against secondhand smoke, for instance. So we also could have programs for smoke cessation. And we should actually conduct campaigns through the media to be able to avoid this risk, especially in indoor air contamination. When we talk about air contamination in general and the risk in workplaces, in some areas, outdoor contamination is high. And when we talk about this, this outdoor air contamination is a threat to public health because we have to make sure that we avoid inefficiencies and control of air quality. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we have in highly urbanized areas where we have people and cities with more than 20,000 inhabitants we know this is difficult to control uh, regarding occupational work. Cancer represents 3% of the incidence because of exposure to uh, asbestos, for instance. The exposure to uh, diesel and carbon exposure also could cause lung cancer. So there are many different factors with different types of incidents. For instance, tobacco con consumption and diet, this is something we can control. Many times uh, the workers do not have any control over this. So for this reason, the responsibility for avoidance of exposure to all of these factors should go to the management personnel to inform workers that they could have this damage and harm to their health. Going to infections, 
And joining this with the messages that we have some infectious agents that cause cancer, especially in the low-income countries, Latin America, 150,000 cases of cancer are caused by infections. And Carolina mentioned Helicobacter pylori. And when we talk about this, we classify this as cancer-causing agents. And Helicobacter is associated to gastric adenocarcinoma. And for that reason, gastric and stomach cancer could be prevented by the control of Helicobacter pylori. So the group considered that stomach cancer is a high incidence in Latin America, and also that the group exposed is a large group. So we have to make sure that we decrease the rate of Helicobacter pylori cancer. We also have several viral infections. We know that these viruses, like, such as the hepatitis V virus, B and C, uh, and all types of liver cancer, uh, this is also a subject for attention and timely diagnosis of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Also, we have to make sure that there's availability for the human papillora virus vaccine. And we know that this HPV can be managed through vaccines to make sure that we can prevent cancer in the target population. And now, we can talk about the application of two doses of this vaccine, but we could also recommend also uh, the HPV vaccine for the prevention uh, against uterine cancer. Also, HIV testing is very important, especially in the, not only in the general population, but also in other populations that are underserved. And we just want to make sure that we are aware of the immunodeficiency caused by HIV. Also, we have to implement sessions of sexual education regarding HIV and HIV. We have also uh, the hormone replacement therapy during menopause. We know that we administer this to uh, improve the health of women during menopause, and especially uh, to uh, improve vasomotor symptoms and so forth. But we have classified the estrogen and progesterone combined therapy as a cancer-causing agent. Any type of hormone replacement therapy includes an increase in breast cancer. So the recommendation should have very clear guidelines as to how we can actually decrease this type of cancer through the regulation of sales. And now we go through screening uh, and reflection we have to reflect of the importance, not only of screening, but also of the entire type of cancer management in our system so that we can have early diagnosis, early treatment, and also just administer the proper treatment, uh, but accompanied by histopathology, uh, a follow up. Uh, and then whether it is just the treatment through radiation, through surgery, et cetera. So when we talk about screening, especially in colorectal cancer, we could have a cold blood test. We could have also the stool test and we could have a colorectal exam. 
or also we could have a colonoscopy depending on the age of the person. So we have already discovered that these measures can be very effective for the control of colorectal cancer. So all of these recommendations show the need to strengthen the human resources specialized in this field and to have the inputs that are necessary. And we want to make sure that we have a reasonable offer of this for screening and for follow-up. And today, uh, in this month of breast cancer, recommendation number 16 uh, is en enshrined in the establishment of good health promotion. How we can ensure that uh, we have early detection through mammography, through manual tests and so forth. So we have a histopathological registry to detect benign or malign lesions and to be able to diagnose uh, on time to make sure that the women receive their treatment. So we always need to ensure di uh, uh, timely diagnostics and uh, treatment. We know that there are people who are more at risk. We know that with uh, increased aging, this increases uh, also the likelihood of cancer. So we need to, we know that there are many um, limitations in terms of coverage throughout the region. That's why we need to begin to launch programs that will take uh, many years in terms of uh, adequate screening. But again, this is a disease that is the leading cause of death in the region. And then finally, with strategies, the um, 70, 90 strategy, in other words, 70% for those uh, with the, the ages of uh, 35 and 45, 90, which deals with, uh, again, patients with precancerous uh, lesions, as well as cervical cancer, and also the uh, human papillon uh, virus. So these recommendations are aligned with strategies to ensure the um, elimination of cervical cancer in the region. And let me just share with you the fact that, um, as was already mentioned by the director, as well as Carolina, that in the virtual arena within uh, PAHO, you will be able to access uh, training opportunities. We have training provided on how um, experts can better improve their communications uh, of these technical advances, working with um, our IT specialists throughout the region. We're hoping to ensure that you have a very fruitful experience so that you'll be able to more effectively and successfully disseminate this uh, code against cancer in the region. Once again, as you can see from the photo taken at the top, that picture was taken several years ago, where at PAHO, a group of experts uh, met who have uh, continued to work up to the present, investing all their efforts to ensure that this become a reality. And this has been with the support of many staff members. This is uh, over the years, we've seen the teamwork thrive. And I know that so many have invested uh, countless hours working in various committees. And the best way to express our appreciation is Carolina supplement in the cancer epidemiology magazine in this publication you can see everyone uh, and it's been really an honor and uh, to be able to share the efforts of all of the experts from throughout the region providing their recommendations that are targeted for the region and for us our code is going to be available through the link and also with the IRC um, website, the PAHO website as well. 
here. We like to thank the cancer team. I'd like to thank all of the support team for having uh, provided so much hard work working with the uh, with through IARC and uh, to ensure that there's a code that is inclusive and that benefits the community overall. And we know that the we need to convey this message to the uh, those that most need the messaging we, to caregivers, to decision makers, pa cancer patients. This is where civil society plays a crucial role in disseminating these findings and recommendations. So now we're going to be looking at the various organizations that have been supporting us in the um, cancer code. And I know many more are going to join in this effort as they help benefit our region. And now we have with us Ida Stampater. She has been a guiding uh, lead member and thanks to her support, this has been possible. So I'd like to thank on behalf of everyone, the support that has been given, joining so many tireless workers and uh, experts in the region. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you very much, Mauricio. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to be uh, in this very important event in California, organized by Union for International Cancer Control. And I also thank the strategic partners, such as the WHO, the IARC, and PAHO, among other organizations that are also very well respected in cancer studies and research in the entire world. It is a great honor to be part of this uh, World Cancer Leader Summit 2023, and also to be part of this launch. We had more than 60 experts in Latin America and the Caribbean working on this code. Many of them were from Brazil, and they were uh, connected by IARC and Bajo. Many global leaders work like me so that we can have a healthier society. And I am very hopeful. I am Ida Stamfate. I am the president of Amigo Aga. And we work with the social responsibility, part of the um, Albert Einstein society in Brazil, and I represent a vital part of the Albert Einstein Hospital, which is a not-for-profit hospital that has been working for over 65 years. We receive resources from donations, and our mission is to offer uh, excellent services, excellent health services to generate knowledge and also promote social justice. We work with uh, modern treatments and humanite treatments. Our hospital was considered the best hospital in Latin America for the fourth consecutive year. The World Best Hospitals 2023 was the ranking that gave it this title. And we are also in a very good place globally. We are the only organizations in Latin America that are among the 100, 100 best hospitals in the world. In the recent ranking for Newsweek, and we were recognized as the best hospital in Latin America in three areas, gastroenterology, oncology, and orthopedics. And I highlight here cardiology and heart surgery, endocrinology and gynecology, neurology, neurosurgery, pneumology, and urology. These are also highlighted areas. This is a very strong hospital structure. There are 20,000 people working and 8,000 doctors 
working with public health in a network of 29 hospitals and also working with 22 other units. We have our organization called Amigo H, which is an organization to collect resources for prevention and also to invest in research against cancer and blood diseases. We try to increase access to our excellent services. As president of this organization, since it was created 12 years ago, I am honored to be here and to have participated in the creation of this code that helps our organization work in prevention. I would like to thank Renata Grabe, our vice president, for the work she did in this project as well. In the past three years, we guaranteed that there were resources so that we could create this code. And now we are going to disseminate it in Brazil. We are still collecting resources so that its 17 recommendations can be disseminated in the next few years. In Brazil, according to INCA, which considered 21 types of the most commonly known cancers in the cancer, uh, we know that we expect 704,000 new cases of cancer until 2025. Skin cancer, that is non-melanoma, is the most common, but then we have breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, colon and rectal cancer, lung and gastric cancer that are the most common ones. And the numbers are alarming. Up to 40% of some types of cancer can be avoided through prevention though. So we have been working for a few years with Amiguaga in this way. We have awareness campaigns that are in line with our motto which is more lives without cancer. So we should talk about prevention. This guides us towards the reduction of cases, and it also helps ease the financial impact. And we bring all our energy to this work. We invest in scientific production in this area, and we also work with education for the population, and we encourage early uh, detection and prevention so that people can take care of themselves and so that we can um, help them so that the disease won't evolve. I am personally in this path. I am the president of Amiguaga, but I also became a cancer patient. I received my diagnosis uh, over a year ago but fortunately it was right in the beginning and I can tell you that the early detection was crucial in my case. My treatment was a success and it also inspired me so that I could improve my lifestyle and I could help other people as well. I am living proof that prevention works and I feel victorious because I can show you that this path is difficult, but it can also lead us to very good results and to inspiring stories. We know that cancer still affects millions of people and many of them lose their lives, but my own path also related to this very important document we are launching today fills my heart with hope. We believe that we can change this reality through prevention that begins with training for our um, healthcare professionals in the primary healthcare specifically. We want to continue this work with other organizations that are being part of this World uh, Summit 2023. I won and I am stronger 
to deal with this battle that is not only my battle, but our battle. We will disseminate this code and we will have concrete practices and public policies so that we can go towards the future in which we will have a society uh, without cancer and more life. Thank you. Thank you, Ida, for sharing your personal experience and offering us that uh, those stories of hope and all the support that you have provided to make this code a reality. I want to thank you, and I want to thank uh, Renata, as you said, and the entire team that has been so kind and that we have worked so well together over the last few months. We're very excited about the next steps forward and also the launching of your initiative in Brazil next week. Thank you. And now we're going to switch it to English uh, for a second. And, and it's a real pleasure for me to, to present uh, the next uh, civil society organization that is just a wonderful example of how advocacy can have impact within our sub-regions with the Healthy uh, uh, Caribbean Coalition. Uh, we have today with us Laura Tucker Longsworth. She is a member of the Board of Directors of Healthy Caribbean Coalition and is the president and founding member of the Belize Cancer Society. She currently also is a member of the Board of Directors of the NCT Alliance and a former speaker of the House of Belize. So with great pleasure, I leave you with Laura. Thank you very much, Dr. Maza. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you for inviting the Healthy Caribbean Coalition to provide brief remarks at this important event, the global launch of the first Latin America and Caribbean Code Against Cancer. On behalf of the president of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, Sir Trevor Hassel, the executive director, Maisha Hutton, and the board of directors, we would like to extend congratulations to PAHO, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, the Latin American uh, Society, and the Caribbean Medical Oncology for the development of this stakeholder-driven science-based recommendations for reducing cancer risks and supporting early cancer detection. We applaud the contextual design of these recommendations, which target a range of key populations, including the general public, health providers, and policymakers. The recommendations also consider local realities, including health systems and their limitations, risk factors, and social inequalities. We appreciate the recognition of the commercial determinants of cancer and the need to protect the NCD cancer policymaking space from conflicts of interest. The Healthy Caribbean Coalition is the only Caribbean alliance of civil society organizations focused directly and indirectly on the prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. We have more than 60 member organizations working across Car the Caribbean, including a vibrant network of cancer societies and associations operating at the national level. They're engaged in prevention efforts, supporting people living with cancer and playing a critical role in assisting governments in the implementation of national cancer plans. These civil society organizations are essential actors in the national cancer response, reaching grassroots communities through highly intensive and often innovative in your educational outreach initiatives. The work of civil society in expanding the reach of screening programs is invaluable. They create bridges between hard to reach vulnerable communities and the health system to facilitate early detection in otherwise marginalized groups. 
They represent a lifeline for patients living with cancer and patients who have survived cancer, establishing multi-purpose support groups with limited human and financial resources, but nevertheless anchored by community volunteers. Caribbean cancer organizations are powerful advocates throughout the cancer continuum, including advocating for greater equitable access to basing and cutting edge medicines and technologies. They're highly respected national goods and often the first point of contact between the general public and cancer. The Latin American and Caribbean Code Against Cancer is a simple but powerful advocacy tool for Caribbean cancer societies. The code will support the education and empowerment of Caribbean people, healthcare professionals and decision makers around cancer risk reduction and early detection. The Healthy Caribbean Coalition is happy to engage with our membership in the sensitization and dissemination of this code against cancer across the region and amongst our key stakeholders. At the regional and national level, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition and our membership will share the cancer code within our existing networks, targeting the general public, including priority populations. We will work with colleagues at PAHO and CARFA and within local ministries of health to reach healthcare providers, as well as those tasks with designing policies and programs. We will reach out to other key actors, including academia, young people, and the media to expand our reach. We also look forward to joining our deep Caribbean regional experiences and expertise to contribute to future iterations of the code against cancer, ensuring that it remains constantly relevant and useful for our Caribbean community. We know though that it is not the intention of the code against cancer to address oncology treatment and palliative care services. However, once cancer is detected, it is important that citizens have access to treatment and care that are equitable and informed by evidence-based guidelines. The Healthy Caribbean Coalition once again congratulates SPAHO, a national agency for research on cancer and other partners responsible for the development of this important regional document. We close with appreciation for the inclusion of civil society in the launch of the code against cancer and for the strong recognition of the role of civil society in disseminating the information across the region. I thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Laura, for those words. And we're really looking forward on working with you and ensuring that all the messages are aligned to the needs of the Caribbean region. And you are the partner that that will make this happen for us. So thank you again for your kind words and looking forward to disseminating the code with you in the Caribbean. Eh, y ahora, eh, para terminar, eh, deseo... To end, I would like to introduce a person who is a reference uh, in our region, Eduardo Casab. Uh, he is the founder of SLACOM, and uh, he is the president of USS, and right now he's an ambassador to the World Cancer Conference. So many of the people who are here today have participated and are participated in the meeting in California. So Eduardo represents the voice of civil society and I'll give him the floor uh, towards the uh, end of our meeting to talk about the role of the civil society. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Yes, today is a very 
happy day, uh, really, together, the Latin American community of specialists in cancer control uh, are happy to work on the initiative that was launched six years ago when in a meeting of the International Cancer Society in Paris, we talked about uh, the importance of this uh, with the former IARC director, Tim Martin. Uh, we talked about cancer in Europe and there we established the importance, but there were no projects to extend the code to different areas of the world. So at that point in time, we launched the idea of the Latin American Caribbean code that was against cancer that was six years ago. Yes, of course, in the middle, we have had the pandemic, we have had the change in administration and so forth. But at that point in time, the initial actors represented an international community and Latin American community effort, joint effort. We had a network of institutions of uh, 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 different institutions of Latin America, the SLACOM, which is the Latin American Society and Caribbean Medical Network. Uh, all of these institutions that had not participated before uh, with the European partners, uh, have participated now in the Latin American code, as you have already heard. But beyond the code itself, and you have had a wonderful description of this code, both by former and present uh, experts, the Latin American Caribbean code against cancer is a tool that was designed by Latin American expert, not only for cancer, but uh, also in pollution, in communicable diseases, in air contamination, anything that could cause cancer in human beings. This is a collaborative effort. This is perhaps the best example of the last few years that we have in Latin America as to how to put ideas into practice. So we have many guidelines, many recommendations both for primary and secondary and treatment, secondary and primary treatment of cancer. But the problem is to make sure that we put this into practice through action by the countries, through health systems, through communities, in the dissemination and implementation of this. So this is our task. Possibly, if we as a community could join patients, experts, medical specialists, but also people in government, policy makers, and then the health systems. If all of them could be involved, that would be great. So I think today the code represents the most modern view of medicine. We are not talking about curative medicine only. The present concept of modern medicine is to make sure that people do not get sick. Because if people do not get sick, then it doesn't need, they don't need treatment. These people are active in their societies. And so the code is not only a document, it is a, an educational tool for the community, for the entire region, for all our countries, for our communities, and for those experts in health policy implementation. But also, we are placing cancer in the public agenda, and that had been lost in the past few years, especially during the pandemic. However, this is the best expression that when the Latin American community decides to forge ahead with the project, the project gets done. So my sincere appreciation and personal appreciation to Dr. Luis Santini, who has been a real fighter. And then also to Islacom, the CEO of Islacom, and also the 
important role that patients have uh, play, have uh, played. Uh, also, the alma mater, uh, you know, Nessa, the alma mater of this project, but also my sincere thanks to all of you. 700 specialists interested in cancer who have participated in this meeting. And to all of you, we want to give us give you your our support. The code is alive. The code is available for you to use. And we do hope that this effort will make of the code a more effective tools applicable to our populations. Thank you so much. And my sincere appreciation to Dr. Massa. Thank you so much for having uh, coordinated our work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you for your warm words. It has been a great collaboration with all the experts, with all the organizations, the civil society. This is just the beginning. And we do hope that with this recommendation, we will impact the lives of the people to prevent the disease that is, has taken such a wide region of our region, a wide area of our region that has caused so many lives. And we do hope that in the future, we can join international organizations, academic organizations, civil society, governments to make sure that cancer is not a main cause of death in our region. Thank you so much for having been with us today. Thank you to all the presenters, all the collaborators, all the people who have joined the meeting. It has been a great pleasure to be with you and we do hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.